So <clears throat> this video is interesting. I'm gonna stop this so you can see what I'm doing here. You, most of you, if you follow me, you've seen my workflow, kind of how I do stuff. I'm using Scalar with the felt piano <clears throat> as an instrument. I think I said this before, it does have instruments. Most, If you've ever used Scalar, then you know it does, or you've experienced it or tried it at least once. Um, felt piano is probably my favorite, that and the soft piano. Um, yeah, and these are uh, render audio uh, chords, <clears throat> some jazz chords. So before I put Scalar in, I use the radio. And what I like about using the radio is you can add some cool textural stuff to the background. And I know a lot of people doing um, hip hop, R&B, stuff like that. They don't, they might steer away from that type of stuff, like the ambient stuff. I'm gonna call it the ambient sounding stuff because technically it's not really ambient, it's just music. But this pro uh, one that came out with the delays kind of uh, lends itself to that vibe of creating textures and ambient stuff by using multiple delays and just, I mean, I can't even sit here and explain this. I watched a video to just kind of get the basis on it, but it is pretty intricate for a delay. They do have some randomization, which helps like if you just ex just tampering and you don't know what in the world is going on, that would be me. Um, I know a few things that I'm doing, but some of it's kind of complex. But yeah, so using something like that, and it doesn't have to be this app necessarily, but to pull something off the radio and then capture that moment is what I did uh, right here. And then I put, you know, selected just a section of it that I like. And it's textural stuff in the background, but I used it also. I pitched it down like, I think, three semitones. And then I send it out. And the reason, oh, so that's another thing I'm going to answer. The reason why I use um, Koala as a slide over and when I'm in AUM is because, well, outside of the fact that it's easy to put it away and pull it back out when you need it, it also allows me to do the split audio stem um, on a track, but also I can export uh, an item. So I, I usually export this stuff to Chord AI to see if I can find, maybe pick off what uh, tempo, it's, I mean, not tempo, um, what am I looking for? to pick off what uh, key it's in, especially if I'm gonna use a sample, right? Cause I wanna kinda know what the key of the sample is so I can kinda build around that. So I did that and it came up with a E that it's in the key of E. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, but it reminds you, it's just a sample. So I don't know everything detail on it, but I'm just using it as a textural background, playing it at a lower volume. I'm going to lower it even lower. Now I'm running this through the SP. So there is some 303 compression and some 404 um, vinyl sim. And then I showed this technique too by using Koala. Sometimes like you want to, I mean with Scalar, because I'm not using MIDI here necessarily. Um, I'm just using, and when I say MIDI, I'm not using MIDI notes to play the instrument. I'm just recording in audio samples. But <laughs> all that is is the, um, let me turn on the computer. Sorry about that. That thing will cut off on you in the middle of something. Um, the duet that is. So let me go back in here and kill this for right now. So after I get that, then I'll go in and say, okay, I'm gonna just start picking through some chords. So I try to pick something that's in, like this one's in D flat minor or E. It's like a 70s jazz uh, series of chords. And then I take those chords. And pick out maybe four to five chords, depending on what I'm doing, sometimes more. But that's generally what I'm at is around eight chords max. Um, and then I'll build from that. And then I'm recording these chords in. And by the way, I mean, if you really wanted to technically, you could go here. 
Definitely don't want all those pops in there. So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. See if I can find a zero crossing point, maybe. Yeah, there we go. So that's a trick technique, however you want to term it. Zoom in, find a zero crossing point. If you struggle with zero cross points, that's just where the line is a line that runs here and you'll find where that that uh, wave touches that line. At that very moment where it touches, that's a zero cross point and it basically keeps your sample from sounding like it pops. So that sounds better. And then one thing you can do too is um, if you're having trouble is, is sometimes add a little attack on the front of, of it. We'll do that for you. That's just a little something there. But anyway, let's get back to where we were. So you can see I kind of have it gated. It's just, actually this is one shot, it shouldn't be. That one's popping a little bit too. So we'll go in and I'll show you again. And you can see that line that runs there if you look really close. I, it looks like I'm at a zero cross point, but for some reason it's popping. So I'm gonna find another spot, maybe down over here. And you can also listen for it. Oh, it's not popping, not too bad. Okay, family checking on you because we had an earthquake. So, but as far as I know, most people I know are doing fine. I gotta respond though to that in a minute. All right, I'm gonna speed up this video. We can do, I can do all this editing editing later and you can use your ears by the way just listen for it all right so i just took these chords played them all the way through played it held it for a long time enough to give me you want some tail in on that right so that you have okay samples These are from um, the Eldre Drum Kit Volume 4, which I like a lot. His stuff is cool. He does, because he does a lot of lo-fi type music, he has a good sound. I think the sounds are where they need to be. You can take anything, though, and make it sound that way. You can, He, I think he uses a lot of um, different effects on his drums, and there's a ton of iOS that you can do. Or if you know that you know like how to do it then yeah of course but for those that don't one of the things i use is you can take like a hip-hop drum and i'll i'll tend to um use the tone button on koala to tame it a little bit so it's not and i'd especially do that on snares hats i didn't do it on this one i actually like that one the way it sounds but you just, you want it to be a little more mellow. Some of them can get really sharp. Okay, going back to where we were. So there's the drums. I already got a drum thing programmed, so you don't have to wait for me to sit here and do that. But I wanted to show you how you can add this. Now let's, let's do this. Let's take the loop off. We'll take the one shot off. And we will add in here a stretch. And we'll, that, and sometimes I'll use that to help me figure out, okay, this is like two bars, right? to this beat or tempo. Now that stretch may be, because the tempo I'm playing is in double time, I'm gonna make this a four bar. There you go. So it's it's stretching it to the tempo that the that is set, which is 132, but I'm actually playing half time. So I'm gonna put the, instead of two bars, I'm gonna put it at four bars. Okay, so there's that textual, I'm gonna add, if this bothers you too, like you can always move, you can move the slide over here, but you're still gonna have the dots, right? Because the dots are telling you, hey, go full screen if you want to or close it out. 
So I have fat fingers. You just got to adjust, especially on the iPad mini because obviously it's smaller. Um, so here it is. So we're going to add in four bars, which is all we have here anyway, I believe. It's four bars. Yep. Okay, so there's your four bars for that. If you want to check the playing, go back in here. Remember, because this is control, AUM's controlling it. And it sounds off, right? But I'm again, I'm using it as a background. So let's play these chords first. We're going to play them in here. So you got to trigger it here. And we need a count in. So I'm going to set a metronome, put the pre-roll at one. Now you'll see me I'm gonna slide that over for a second. I'll go in here. And since I'm running it through here, you're hearing the 303 effect on that, by the way, which sounds good um, if you ask me. Um, but you're gonna have to put some effects on here, like this barricade, because as soon as I take it off this, uh, from running out of the SP, it's gonna sound not as good. So I'm gonna add in my typical thing and you can watch me do that. Put some haze on that jammy. Widen it out. I always put barricade on there too. It's usually the last thing in the, in the mix for me. Um, you don't have to use fab filter. I do like fab filter though. And I'll use like the dynamic mix and one of the balancing, mixed purpose balancing. And really, honestly, those are the three. And if you run it through the 303, you're gonna get that nice vinyl effect. But if you don't have that, then you got options, right? So you could go and use like the INH2. I said that all backwards. The IHNY2. And that one has some cool effects in it for like the lo-fi vibes you got. Saturn has distortion type stuff. Volcano has some cool lo-fi stuff. Um, and then probably the one I use the most is going to be Bit Juggler if I want to decrease the bit width or the bit depth. Boy, I'm all off today. And then the reverb. I mean, not reverb. Sorry about that. What I meant to say was... And then the... Um, where is it at? Oh, real bus. Jeez. Sometimes I'll put that before the that one. Put the and I just use the master in here, the master tape, and it'll kind of give it that. There's so many other ones now. At, at one point, you only had a few to choose from. iOS is loaded with options now, so. So let's do this. <clears throat> I'm gonna take off the uh, 303 effect here. Bypass it so that you get a more accurate sound. So it's not as vinyl effect because there's no vinyl effect on here. But if you want a vinyl effect, you can either use a vinyl sample in Koala, which is the easier way to do it. Or, I believe, because I don't do this often with the, this, let's see, where was that vinyl effect? I want to say it's in uh, the Universal Audio has, I think they have vinyl effect. Yeah, they have it in there. You probably have to go with more like a, a coloration. And then, or you know what? Chow has it too, I believe. There's gentle warble coloration. Mm. 
There's all kinds of ones in here. Let's 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 see if we can get. I think I have the child stuff on here. I have it. It's just my. It might be on my phone. Yeah, I think it might be on my phone. Unfortunately. Let's see. Real bus doesn't have. They gotta have vinyl effect, I believe, in here. Um. They have tape flange. Yeah, see, they have the wear, the hiss, saturation. So you can set up how. You just don't hear the vinyl crackle. So. You'd have to you have to get that vinyl crackle from somewhere else if that if that's what you're missing. I personally don't like I use it on the SP404, but I use it so low. I mean, I mean it's extremely low to where you barely can hear it. But you know it's there. Let's see if Volcano has it. I can't remember. I know they have a vintage which definitely warms the sound up, but that's not really what I was looking for. So technique I would use, remove that slot, bring these down, is I would go into here and just like I created that, um, just like I created that kind of textural sound with the radio and that, that delay, you can come here and do this, watch. Go sample, click, not that. Hit your uh, import file on there. I'm gonna have to go into because I I'm blind. I'm not blind, but I'm just saying that I'm not. I can't see that dang good. Um, let's go here, okay. And then just get you some vinyl effects uh, stuff. So there's some lo-fi folly. So oh, this is free too, by the way. So Cymatics has a pack called the life pack i want to say it is and it's all these fall all this folly different places and it has vinyl crackle and it's free on their website some are kind of intense So the good, that's pretty good. Let's go with that one. So the good thing about this is just lower the volume to it sounds right to you. That's a little loud. I'm going to keep mine really low, maybe a little louder than that. All right. That's pretty good. All right, cool. If it's too, too, you can always take the tone and move the tone around and, and adjust it. Use your ears. I think that's a, you know, you hear people say that, use your ears. And it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> but it's true. And if you do a stretch on it, it kind of go, it, it kind of stretches it to go with the track, the beat. So, Let's do that. It's going to be a four bar, same thing. And now you have your vinyl crackle. So there's options too where you could, if you wanted a sample only, or let's say you wanted the chords to only be vinyl crackle, but not the drums, you could sample the uh, these with the vinyl crackle or mix them. You can even throw it in and mix it. I'm not going to do that. I just prefer to put it in as a separate piece. That way, if I don't like it, I can adjust it. If you start throwing it in over top of your chords, then you can't adjust it, right? It's going to be very, or at least it's very hard to do. So um, yeah, let's go back into slide overview and back into here. And there we go. So now we can play it again. It's doing a count. In. I like to take that count in off though sometimes so I can... And 
that felt piano kind of sits in the back lovely too so you could you could throw it's got its own little vibe to it but you could throw some reverb over it too like that eos 2 and put a just like five percent ambience over or something if you want to add a little more to it to the chords and then you got the option too of um let's slide this oops slide this over I, i'm learning to use less tracks and i'm gonna tell you why is because i want to be because the iphone just i just made a video about it too they released the uh swam for the uh, iphone and on the iPhone, you can only see one track literally at a time, unless you turn your phone sideways. But I don't like to use it that way. I prefer to use it just regular, like uh, the way I would hold it. And so um, I tr I'm trying to learn to work because I used to do everything on the iPhone and Koala. So I'm trying to learn to work with less of these. I need two, but three is, a you know, on the iPad, obviously you can get more in depth of how you want to use it but I'm um, trying to learn to use less. So another thing I like to do, and you've heard, if you ever heard my music, you know, I love to put um, Swam instruments into it. I just, they just sound so good. You know, I don't know what else to say. Um, I'm definitely guilty of that. All right, and then I'll use the ambience and I'll turn it down really low, like maybe 5%, just to give you something over the background. Um, if you don't have a keyboard, I prefer a keyboard to be honest with you, but the inbuilt keyboard on here is not bad, especially if you're not worried about playing chords, but you do want to play in the same key. So therefore we're using us here. It looks like they got us on. We're going to do a C sharp minor scale even though we know, yeah. So if you wanna do a scale with this and cut down on how many, um, where is that, right here. And you're on the iPad, you wanna cut down on how much you use on there. Watch this, you can go input, instead of doing input keyboard there, do input scalar, it's gonna be this one. And then send this one. Okay, that one's already there, set. Yeah, and so the keyboard in is gonna be scalar. And then what you would do is you'd open this scalar. Now, if you don't wanna do all this, you could just do one on a, on a MIDI thing. You'd open this one and just go to scales and find C sharp. I said minor, there it is. So then it sets the keyboard up here. So you could use this. I'm gonna do humanized velocity on here. Um, primary, I like to do both velocity and timing, but primarily because I'm not playing on a real keyboard I'm playing on here. Now the cool thing on the phone is they added the velocity or the um, pitch bin as an X, Y, and then the other one, or X or whatever. And then I think the Y axis moving up and down controls the um controls the vibrato which is nice because you don't really have that on here unfortunately well maybe you do but you got to open this thing like if you want to add some dirt to this which is something I like to do. I I like this one here. Let's see, we're gonna add it before the reverb though. And then I'll use like the general purpose stuff All right, right there to add some more character to it. So there's like some glue there if you want. Here's a tiny bit of air. Let me try that one out. This is a parallel compressor. I'll usually turn it down, maybe three, de uh, three dB down. I prefer to play with something like, I, I, touch an iPad is cool for like the drumming. I can get used to that, but the, 
I don't know, it's something about having an actual keyboard that I just prefer. But hey, you use what you got, right? If I didn't have a keyboard, I'd have to figure it out. Um, don't like that one pick the jazz or there's one called the sound okay so I have a hard time playing it there and if you're trying to use scalar and you want to lock the keyboard that helps too by the way so do a key lock and then put it on the um, the white keys and the only reason I'm saying that is because it's, well, if you got fingers like mine, it's, sometimes your finger will hit that when you want to just. So I already can tell I miss having the pitch bins and the, um, so the, the way I get around it in here is usually, if you do it, shrink it down a little bit, it condenses down to this. So you guys get the point. So kind of R&B, jazzy, um, ambient vibes mixed all together just sound really nice to me. And hopefully you enjoyed uh, going through this little experience. We're going to call it the experience. And it was 132 BPM. And you'll see that I tend to write, I'll even usually write the key. I'm not going to do it right now. Um, make sure you save as here to the experience 132 BPM. If you don't save in here and in here, you're gonna lose something. I'm just gonna be honest with you up front. It's just gonna happen. It's just the way it is. It's rare that you cannot save and get and get away with stuff. So that's that. Um, you saw me kind of put a mix on there. You saw me show you some couple instruments, ways to use Swam. I could go ahead and play it. I'm not going to do that right now. I don't have the time. I need to get back to some other things. But just so you can see how it works, I think if you explore in these ways and find your rhythm, your style, your whatever it may be, um, you can pick and choose parts and, and uh, maybe enhance your way. And then hopefully... Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comment sections on, uh, I've been, a couple of people have done it recently where they tell me like certain parts they appreciate. And the reason why is because it helps me to know what to focus in on videos. Cause I'm typically just like all over the place. I might have one thing I'm going in on a video, but then sometimes I'm like, I'll jump around and just start doing stuff and showing things that I'm messing with. And so yeah, help me, um, Help me help you, as they say, right? If there's something you really would like to see, feel free to ask or let me know and I'll do my best to try to make a video about that particular thing. Um, yeah, and that's it. All right, I'm out.